Well, what's happening guys? Dan here, the East Beach Shop. We're in the old shop and uh, well, it brings back a lot of memories. I was talking to my buddy uh, Peg from Zip Ties and Buy Supplies and, and he's been, uh, well both of us, you hear every now and again, well more lately, it's the old, it must be nice. Must be nice what you have and all this sort of stuff and uh, you know I'm in this this old garage and it's uh, it's 440 square feet. It's uh, you know a small double. We have an eight foot ceiling. Uh, when I bought this house, which I could barely afford when I was 18 years old, um, it was plain Jane. There was like four screw in light bulbs, a few outlets, and that was it. So the first year or so, maybe even two years I was here, I used it as much as I could. And uh, the one fall I scraped together, I think it was $1,000. And I managed to insulate and wireless place and uh, <laughs> if you can't tell that's where it stopped and that's who did the work and that is uh, some of the best money I think I've ever spent in my entire life it's not pretty it's not 100% but you know what it works and it's kind of like it must be nice I get it, it must be nice but you gotta work for uh, for what you have and the path you decide to take is very important. Peg, that guy is one of the hardest working guys I've ever met in my entire life. Wait a second. Are we pulling carbon tater off of a 79 Ford engine in the back of a 79 Ford for 79 Ford? Yeah. Oh, right on. And uh, he's out there doing his thing. Well, I, I had a few Chardonnays. What of it? And people think that that, whatever, a shop and all these things, all, all this... Uh, pretty nice trucks he has just fell into his lap but that's not the case and I hear that well it must be nice to have all these cars and all these tools and all this stuff wherever it may be and I'm not gonna lie it's very nice but it's been a journey I think there's a lot of people sitting at home who are uh, waiting for it to just happen I get emails very regularly about uh, a asking how to get started on a YouTube channel uh, if I can shout out their YouTube channel, if I can give them advice on their YouTube channel to get going and stuff like that. And uh, it's a grind. The way I do YouTube's a grind. Two, three videos, four videos a week. It's a grind. Um, not saying anyone else doesn't. Some of those guys out there putting those hour, hour and a half long videos once a week or something. I'm sure it's a grind as well. I, I don't do that, but I'm sure it's not easy. <laughs> YouTube is not easy. Uh, honestly, I think it would have been a lot easier and probably more profitable and... Uh, if I just got a second job, <laughs> but here we are. I kind of, I kind of went off a tangent there, but so when it comes to it, must be nice. I started off in this garage that I had, you know, thousand dollars invested into, barely making the mortgage, have a tenant in the basement to afford the bills, and uh, started buying El Cheapo cars, and I would kind of, you know, before YouTube, buy them, sell them, make a few bucks, get to enjoy the car I was at it. On to the next one, on to the next one, on to the next one. For a long time, my life was buy a car, work on it all winter, enjoy it for the summer, and sell it, or or maybe even sell it for after it got done, didn't even get to enjoy it much, to get enough money to get into the next car. And that was the little side hustle. And then, uh, you know, job got better, and met Danny, and, uh, you know, expenses were, were pretty good. We, you know, we had some, a few dollars. We weren't rich by any means, but we could afford a couple or three cars. And that was nice. Then the second I had two cars, the pressure was like, oh, I can work on this, but if I don't get it done, I still have my other hot rod to drive. And that was great. And then I started putting on YouTube and doing this work. And, and next thing you know, I had a lot of cars. And uh, for the first bit, I was spending every YouTube dollar I had to buy more cars, more parts, make more content, chasing the stream. It was a, a losing money or break even at best situation for the first uh, year or two or whatever you want. For sure the first year because I wasn't making any money and then the second year was probably that as well. And uh, it took a lot of time and it was a grind. I, I don't even know how many videos I have now, 600 or some crazy number like that out there. So it's a lot of videos. And a rule of thumb, which everyone always asks me when it comes to, to the YouTube side of it, Every minute of minute of footage is about an hour of work, whether you're wrenching, editing, uploading, going to get parts. So, so you think to yourself, uh, obviously this video is an exception, but uh, for your typical wrenching video, for me anyways, and that works out very well. So a 25 minute video is probably 20, 25 hours of work. <clears throat> 
So must be nice. We're back to that. It must be nice. And from the outside, yeah, I got a lot of cars. Uh, we we you know, bought that second garage. We got two projects going at once. I got some some nice tools. A lot of it's used. A lot of secondhand stuff. A lot of pawn shop stuff. A lot of garage sale stuff. A lot of Facebook Marketplace stuff. Very few things I buy brand new. I, I think my welder and maybe the, a grinder because I burn through them. <laughs> you buy those brand new, and the rest of it's just been scrounging here, buying there. You see a deal, you buy it, you put it in the shed. I'm going to get to it. So just to kind of give everyone that perspective, it takes a long time to get to wherever you want to go. And if your goal is to have more cars, I mean, if you're going home and sitting on the couch flipping channels, that's, that's probably not the way to do it. If you're calling it in at work, you're not working overtime. I worked many Saturdays, a lot of overtime. Uh, overtime was car money. <laughs> Monday to Friday was to pay bills and eat craft dinner, but Saturday overtime money, that was for hot rod parts. And that's always how it's been. And uh, for now, same thing, the extra money goes into hot rods or uh, down payment for a second mortgage like an idiot. And then once you're, once you're uh, quote unquote successful and, and you're, you're headed on the path, you gotta decide what way is the best for you. And so we had this house, we had the small garage and it was very apparent I had outgrown it and I was amazed at the level of support from you guys that I had gotten in this small little garage. I'm thinking to myself like, man, why would, uh, 50 or 60,000 people be interested in watching me uh, wear my snowsuit because this garage is not very warm. I'm so soft now from the new garage. Work on old junky hot rods. And I thought to myself, well, it's probably time to invest in myself, the channel, all these things. Uh, probably could have kept kept going at, at, a, at a flat rate and it would have been fine and, and whatever. But you want to keep growing, you want to keep going more, you want to you know get promoted or whatever you want to call it. So that's the way we went. Now we were looking for property out of town, bigger property in town, you know, renting shops, commercial property, all those sort of things. And uh, there's really not a right or wrong answer there. What we decided to do, what I decided to do, was knock on the neighbor's door and ask him how much he would like to sell his house. If you're trying to get a deal, that's not the way to do it. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I didn't, I love where I live. Uh, as much as I hate to admit it, we're close to my parents, which I do enjoy. And uh, didn't want to really leave. So now we have the second garage, we have more parking. Could we use more room? Absolutely. And uh, a lot of people have told me for, and I get it all the time. I should be in the country, I should have an acreage, I should have a big shop. And you know, you're not wrong. But for me, I love the city. I, I love the conveniences of it. I love how I'm close to the parts stores, Canadian Tire, Home Depot, the, the Bolt Supply. Anywhere I need to be, I can go there in 10 minutes, be back working. And I'm not a very organized guy. When you're out in the country, you need to have a lot of organization and a lot of stuff. The other thing I have seen, well, what I've done now, I guess before I say that, I have minimized what I have in both garages. I've tried to streamline a little bit. I'm still messy as hell, don't get me wrong. But I threw out, oh, Danny can vouch for it, five or six truckloads worth of stuff. I took the cream of the crop, put it in the shed or the basement. Everything else went to scrap, garbage, gave it away, tried to sell it, whatever, and it was gone. And if I need it again, I'll go buy it. This this past summer, I went to the swap meet and I just filled the truck full and I put a sign that said free. <laughs> and everybody took whatever they took and whatever came home went, went to garbage. So I'm trying to have as few things as possible as I can to have more working room. I've seen shops and I know a lot of you guys, whether you admit it or not, have told me the bigger the spot you have, the more crap you have. And, uh, and I really have seen that now with this second shop just 10 feet away, I haven't been in there in days because I'm working on this stupid hot rod. So if I had this giant shop, I'd be heating the whole shop, lighting the whole shop, all this stuff. Now that's great, I get to shut that off, cost me no money, and that's the end of it. I'm forced to work over here. As much as I want to get into the nice white lights and, and have the proper heat and not freeze while I'm on my back, those are the choices I made. So, must be nice. I guess if you want to say that, just make sure you're, you're giving her 110%. Some people are giving a lot of things, inheritance stuff, win stuff, whatever it may be. That's not my life. It's a slow, endless grind. So if you want to get out there and, and have more things, get a second job, you know, work the weekend, get a side hustle, start YouTube. By all means, I wasn't even going to say that on this video, but if you're thinking about starting YouTube, before you send me an email and ask what camera I should use, what editor do I use, 
what, uh, how do you start, how do you talk to the camera, all those things, just make a video and put it out there. I'm the worst guy to ask. I'm terrible at all those things. I'm terrible at uh, any sort of technology. So if I can figure it out, you can too. So get out there, get out in the garage, do something, buy more things. So I'm telling you, the more stuff you have, it's a grind, but it forces you to keep going, and life's pretty good. Don't finance it. Don't do that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you, uh, well, I don't know. Got a tripod video come up at some point.